again. Today we're going to be looking at a shell that I did. So without further ado, let's get started. First off, I have to explain to you what the heck is going on. This is a shell challenge. For those of you who don't know, a shell challenge is basically where a person makes a shell, a box, the outside structures of the house, basically just the walls, and then you have to furnish it and put all the wallpapers and all that kind of stuff. But you can't touch the walls. You can't like, oh, I want just a little bit more space and then scooch the wall back. You can't do that. You have to keep the shell the same way it is. In some cases, the shell can be just the outside wall so basically literally just like the shell in some cases it also comes with the indoor walls so like the floor plan already set like where the walls are in this case in the shell that you're seeing right now it already comes with the inside walls it just doesn't come with the windows and then you just have to figure out what goes where what goes in this room what goes in that room and it's pretty fun this shell right here is made by a blackbird. Her origin ID is Bird Blackbird. Bird is one of my friends <laughs> at one of the Discord servers, actually two Discord servers that I am a part of. One of them is a Sims only server and the other one is a gaming server. And she put these shells up. She has made a total of seven, if I remember correctly. She has made this shell. And the requirement for this shell, other than not touching the walls, is that the basement has to have a noisy activity, a noisy hobby. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. What kind of hobby can I put for these sims? And who even lives in this house? So that's what I did. <laughs> You're going to find out what I did in the basement a little bit later on, because right now, we're working on the outside first the, the first things i always like to do when i start these shells is to start with the layout to figure out what are the best spaces for the things so you could see that i put the the kitchen this little hair here is gonna drive me crazy i put the kitchen on the left side and put the office on the right i tried putting the living room in the middle and then that didn't quite work out and as you saw previously i was like what in the world could even fit in this little space here i tried to put these statues in it and i put it in the Christmas tree. I was like, you know what? You know what fits here? A damn Christmas tree. And I put the damn Christmas tree there. <laughs> I also put the Baby Yoda statue, but later on I'm gonna delete it because it just wasn't going with the vibe. I really did try keeping the Baby Yoda statue there, but it had to go, <laughs> unfortunately. I had a lot of fun with this shell. I actually had a lot of fun with all of the shells that Bird has made. I had a little bit more trouble with some other things that I will be talking about later on. <laughs> but I imagine this house belongs to like an older couple. One of them is obsessed with Christmas and the other one is is more like a darker maybe like a slight goth kind of person and no they live together and they have a cat you're going to see that I put cat furniture later on that was really fun trying to you know, combine those two things a lot for Christmas and the, the more modern aspects of it all this kind of build is not really the thing that I usually build like it's not my style I'm not a very modern person this hair here so it was a little bit daunting but I think I did a pretty good job, at least I think it looked good. <laughs> and the people who saw it afterwards said it looked good, so I'm like, okay. <laughs> I put this uh, table right in that corner, I thought it fit perfectly, and since there's only two people, it fit perfectly. That little table there looking out the window, I think that's super cute. You sit down and have your breakfast, and you know, looking out the window, looking at people passing by, maybe you're the kind of gossiper kind of person. I don't know. <laughs> and on the other side, a table also fit perfectly in that same spot because it's the same amount of squares. I'm like, another desk is gonna go right there. <laughs> and the office, I believe, belongs to the Christmas lover person. I think they're more like a lively person. I put a chess table. And I think it turned out pretty cute. Uh, another thing that I do in my builds is I put all of the, the basic furniture down and then I start decorating. I think it's a lot easier that way because you don't have to keep going back and forth between like the categories that The Sims has. So I, I find it easier to know in that way and then you start doing the decorations and that kind of stuff. I had a little bit of trouble in the kitchen because I wanted upper cabinets but I put some really big windows and I didn't want to get rid of the big windows but I still wanted the upper cabinets so I had to compromise. I ended up changing the windows. Oh, 
the microwave. I could not for the life of me put that in the corner without it poking out of the countertop. I could not. I, you know, when you click the alt button, the item that you have selected will slide across the screen. It won't attach to the grid and it would not not attach to the grid. It just would not go where I wanted it to go. And that was very frustrating. So I even tried putting other things on that little corner, but everything was poking out of the countertop and I was like, nope, I am not dealing with that right now. You can see here now me struggling with the upper cabinet and I turned out the windows and it turned out okay. It's not bad. I would have liked it to be a little bit different, but it looks fine. <laughs> What's about to come up is also me trying to put like those shelves on the walls and I wanted to put some stuff on those shelves and that didn't quite work out. I have no idea why nothing would fit there. You know, there's like these little potted plants that you can put on shelves, you can put like on those kind of surfaces. They would not go on the shelves whatsoever. I have no idea why nothing fit, although technically it should fit. Everything just wanted to go up on the upper shelf and that's it. It didn't want to go on any of the other two shelves. That drove me a little bit insane, but it looked fine. I just wanted a little kind of plan on there, but it didn't work out. Here's the thing I was talking to you about. So I was here clicking individually every single plant that I could find to see if it would fit. It would not fit so i just had to deal with it <laughs> this hair here is not wanting to stick in place i have baby hairs and depending on how long they are they will curve a, a specific way because i have curly wavy hair you can't really tell right now because today is actually my wash day so my curls are like non-existent at the moment they're more like a poofy mess but i can assure you i have curly hair wavy-ish curly hair and so because of that these little baby hairs decide to you know just do whatever they want and see here ta -da. <laughs> i'm trying to hide them away but that doesn't quite work all the time why are we even talking about my hair we're supposed to be talking about the build here <laughs> anyways let's get back on track shall we i have a hard time picking out the rugs that i want to use i feel like i need simpler rugs sometimes and they don't come in the size that i want i know we can't have everything we want in life but i wish we could have a larger variety of sizes of rugs or maybe the rugs that we already have maybe they could come in like like a, a plain swatch not all the rugs obviously they don't come in a plain swatch and i really want to use them and then the ones that do come in a plain swatch are not the size that i want and so it's <laughs> tough out there <laughs> I had fun putting up the Christmas decorations. I am a huge Christmas fan. After Thanksgiving, I am a huge Christmas fanatic. I listen to Christmas music basically every single day. So I had a lot of fun putting up the garlands in the house. Oh, another thing that I thought of while looking at this. Spa Day comes with some really nice wallpaper. Some of them are kind of weird, but this paneling? is really good i don't know what the difference is between the spa day paneling and like the base game paneling but i always prefer the spa day paneling i don't know the wood just looks better <laughs> i don't know why that is but it is <laughs> If you agree with me, make sure to support me down in the comments. And they also come with a lot of different swatches, so that's a plus for me, because it came in green, which was going with the Christmas theme, so... <laughs> and a fun fact for all of you who might not be Brazilians is that evergreen trees are extremely rare here. We have a specific kind of pine tree here in Brazil. I will put a picture of it right here for you to see. I like to call it the inverted pine tree because, you know, the branches go up instead of going down. <laughs> but it is actually illegal to chop down these trees because the area that they grow in is in the southern region of Brazil, the south. That's where a lot of settlers came in afterwards, especially European settlers and farm people. So you can imagine that they chopped every single damn tree they saw on their way. <laughs> this specific tree is basically like an endangered species so when it's illegal to chop down that tree or else you'll get a huge fine so sometimes when you're looking at the fields there's like a random lonely tree in the middle of nowhere because they literally can't chop it down <laughs> let me tell you right now about what's going on love seats in the sims 4 why do couches not come with matching love seats i put down a couch that i liked and when i went to go look for the love seat guess what it wasn't there i have no idea how many 
many couches I put down to find one that had a love seat, but I eventually did. It wasn't the couch that I wanted to have, but it was the one that I had to have because that was the one of the only ones that had a matching love seat and a chair. I know that there are people who love mismatched stuff, like mix and match chairs in the dining room or that kind of stuff. I am not that kind of person. I am the kind of person who likes things to be perfect and to be symmetrical. I am that kind of person. I like to make sure that things are symmetrical and aligned perfectly. So for me to not have a matching love seat with the couch that I want really frustrates me because I don't want to put a mix matching love seat that could possibly work but it just doesn't because as we know the wood tones are completely different the like one green here is completely different from the green over there my brain goes like <laughs> Work. I liked putting the different rugs in the bathroom. I think it just looks so festive to have like all of these different representations of Christmas just like on display. And I think this is one of the, the rooms that best combined these two people's tastes. So you have that more modern, clean, like darker toned kind of space with the wallpapers and the bathtub and the toilet and all that kind of stuff. But they also have all those festive rugs everywhere. There's like like three rugs, I believe. In a real house, you'd actually have that amount of rugs. You have one under the sink and outside of the bathtub and one outside of the shower because if you're stepping on tile, your feet are gonna be cold. So to prevent that, you'd actually put all those rugs. But uh, I see a lot of people when they're making Sims builds, they usually put like one rug sometimes like in the middle of the room and doesn't go directly under the stuff. And that's totally fine. It's not like the Sims are gonna get cold, but I don't know. It, it just makes it a little bit more realistic stick to have that amount and there's a bird this bird comes here every single day like multiple times a day and starts hawking at my window so the program is interrupted by this bird's hawking let's appreciate his uh, singing Thank you. He will be continuing his little honking in the background, so I'm sorry for that. I don't even remember what I was saying anymore, but basically, yeah. The amount of rugs that there are in the bathroom, I think, is realistic. <laughs> I believe right now we're getting to the tricky part of this build, which is when I change the foundation. I raised the foundation up because I wanted to have a nice entrance. I also like my houses to have like a raised foundation because I like putting stairs. I think if they're just plain on the ground, it just looks kind of weird. But that turned out to be a problem in this specific build because apparently there is a glitch where if you have a raised foundation, stairs that go from the basement to the first floor disappear and cannot be placed again. I mean, they can be placed, but it's just, it's weird. There's different variations to this glitch some of which makes the ground outside raised as if you use the terrain tools there goes the bird <laughs> But in any case, it's annoying. And so I only realized after a very long time that the stairs were deleted. So it was a pain, obviously, because it took me forever to figure out what the problem was. And so in the end, I was like, you know what? I will leave it the way it is. In the end, I decided aesthetics over functionality. <laughs> so I took the pictures of the landscaping outside with the raised foundation the way I wanted it and then I put the foundation back down to take the pictures of the interior so that I could have the stairs where I wanted them to be. What do you want? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> it went away. <laughs> So that was very time consuming, trying to figure out what was the problem and it was just so much time. I obviously deleted that footage of me trying to figure out what was wrong. I had to research about it. I couldn't find the exact same glitch that happened to me. But like I mentioned, there were different variations of this glitch. Why are you? What are you doing? Go away. <laughs> I'm trying to record. Please. <laughs> In any case, now there's a mosquito here trying to bug me and I can't kill it. Or can I? Well, hold on a sec. I killed it. <laughs> Back to business, shall we? 
I don't remember what I was saying. Oh yeah, I was talking about the foundation. The essence of the glitch is the same. When you have stairs going from the basement to the first floor, if you have a raised foundation, that glitch does not happen if you have stairs going from the first floor to the second. It just doesn't work from the basement to the first floor, which is weird, and I wish they would fix this and many other glitches that I encountered in other shells that I will be talking about in the next video about the other shell that I did that had, I believe, two glitches? It's just, it's insane. Another glitch that happened in this build is when I tried to put the trim on the foundation, some of the corners didn't connect. So there's like this empty space in the corners. You can actually see that if you look closely, you can tell. And that is why I put columns. I was not originally gonna put columns on this house, so I tried to put the columns to masquerade this little glitch there. It didn't quite work out, but I think the columns turned out nicely, so that's a win for me. So yeah, here's me doing the outside. I think it turned out really good. That is why I did the aesthetics over functionality because I think it just looked really nice having those large steps leading up to the house. Um, another thing that I ended up forgetting to do was move the windows up a little because I used the platforms and when you put the platforms it doesn't like move up like a foundation so the stuff around it doesn't move up with it. For example, the windows. The windows didn't move up so they're kind of like in the ground but that's okay, it doesn't look that bad. It's just something that I forgot to do. I will not be uploading this house to the gallery anyways because the house doesn't work. It only works if you don't have a foundation and then if you don't have a foundation it just ruins the aesthetics of the house and I don't want that. Landscaping this house was actually quite fun. It took me a very long time obviously. This video is sped up a ton so you can actually tell how long I spent doing the landscaping but I actually spent a very long time because you know placing stuff individually especially the rocks but I think it looked very cute. I am more of the like overgrown flowers kind of situation that's what I like better so this this was outside of my comfort zone, making it, you know, very nice, very well kept and trimmed bushes and, you know, everything under a little spot. And I think it looked pretty good. <laughs> I think I did a good job. Fun fact, the tree and that rock there are actually kind of inspired by a house that I lived in in the US. They had a, a large tree in the middle of the, the front yard and then a very big rock near the mailbox so that's a little bit of inspiration because I was like the yard is kind of empty and I didn't want to put too many trees because then it would block the beautiful landscaping that I had done so <laughs> I only put one tree and also it goes with the thing that I was going for you know that kind of a uh, well-kept yard. I don't even know what kind of style this is classified in. You can understand what I'm trying to get at. So if I had put another tree, it wouldn't go with the same style. So I was inspired by the house that I had lived in previously. <laughs> it's also not easy to make the squiggly path look good especially when you make it thick like that. Sometimes when you make like a little, little thin squiggly path like it looks okay but when you make it thick like that you have to make sure that the curves are aligned and it's not as easy as it looks and I don't have a mouse I use only the touchpad on my laptop so that also doesn't help me because with the mouse you can move it better across like your desk but moving your finger across the little touchpad is kind of challenging but it turned out okay and I'm happy with what I did <laughs> another thing I like to do in my builds is to always put that little like trim of dirt underneath the house like on the foundation of the house it just looks more realistic it doesn't look like it's just floating in the middle of nowhere i don't know how to explain but yeah you understand <laughs> another thing that's interesting is that i actually like using the grid i know most builders always turn off the grid when they start building in the sims but i actually like the grid in most cases because as i said i like symmetry so i like spacing things out evenly especially when when you see when i put little lamps on the on the <laughs> on the path leading up to the house it just makes it <laughs> what are you what are you barking at puppy <laughs> anyways <laughs> here comes puppy hello puppy
so I'm here petting Poppy, just so you know. So that's why I'm kind of leaning this way because he came for a pet. <laughs> um, I didn't really know what to put in the backyard. I would usually put a porch, but I didn't want to mess with the roof of the house to to put that porch there. So no, I just kept it the way it was. And yeah, we're gonna wrap up right now with the screenshots. I hope that you like the house that I built. And as I said, it will not be open on gallery because it is not a functional house. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. And I hope you stick around. And I will see you next time. Bye bye.